Yo, what's poppin'? You already know it's your boy, Mr. J Hill Conversation Series. Uh, man. Happy New Year to everybody. I got a super special guest in this motherfucker. Uh, DJ Scream is here. What's good, dog? What's up? What's up? What's up with you, my uh, bro? Oh, man, man. Where do we start, man? I mean, when I... You know, I'm not one of them niggas that's going like... I don't really tell niggas what they want to hear. Mm-hmm. I know we just met and shit, so... Mm-hmm. When I say this, it ain't because you in my presence, because I don't have to say that. You mm-hmm. know, like... Mm. My nigga is really a legend. I mean, in, in multiple spaces now. Mm. And uh, what I mean by that is like, we can we can start ready, right? right? Mm. Uh, I don't even want to start. Yeah, god damn, we was talking. We was you really talking. start like, <laughs> bro, like you really start. There was there was like uh, just young boy life, just being a young DJ nigga trying to just figure it out and just having a lot of dreams. Mm. Then there was. College, or even before that, used to uh, what's the little dancing shit called when you spin on your head and shit? No, that's the wrong. What's that shit called? I never broke dancing. You never broke that. No, 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 never. (laughs) But no, you you had said it on the interviews like break dancing and um and and something else, and you you try to rap. I no, that was a joke. Nah, is it? Was it a joke? So you ain't never tried to rap, but then you're like, joke. You never tried to rap. It was a joke as a joke. But you tried it though. Yeah, if that a shit would have popped. It wouldn't have been a joke. Oh, it wouldn't have been no joke. Right. It'd be all. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's a joke. It didn't pop, so it was a joke. Fuck it, it's a joke. <laughs> but yeah, so like, yo, it's crazy because we was talking off air, and you was like, "Well, not really off." Air. You were saying you was a mathematic and engineer major at Tuskegee. Tuskegee. I went to Tuskegee. Um, I went as an engineering major, mm-hmm. and then what happened is, shouts to uh, my partner Caesar and all my people. Oh, the hit man. We we pretty much dominated the party and the club scene there and the DJ scene. So what what happened was I had to be real with myself. I'm like I'm way more focused on the music shit than I am on the school shit. Mm-hmm. But since my family sent me here, shit, it'll be disrespectful to not put their yeah. hard earned money to use and figure something out. So I got far enough in engineering, but then cold turkey one day I just went in and changed my major. I was like, man, get, let me do math and computers. How can I get out of here in a year and a half? They're like, well, you got enough credits. So like, let me, yeah, let me do them too. Okay, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, whatever I can get. Because get engineers early. another three years. I need to be out in a year and a half. I got to go back to Atlanta. It's some shit going on. Even that is tough though. Mathematics and computer science. It was never crazy. tough to me. Math is math is never tough to me. It's simple. You know it's, why, bro? You, you add it up. I ain't understand this at first. I'm like, yo, this nigga. Say, at one point in time, I'm looking at it like it looked like almost it was like you was trying to force yourself into the culture because you, you said you was trying to rap, then you was a joke or whatever. No, oh, that it, was but the trying to rap was. After I was well established as a mixtape. Oh, for real? That's a joke. Yeah, oh, no. That's that's wow. what I'm saying. No, I wasn't a young nigga trying to rap. Okay. I was a young nigga that was like, all these niggas trying to rap. Somebody ain't going to make it. Okay. So I need to do some other shit. Okay. And a lot of them niggas didn't make it. So just looking at it, like, even with the DJ and shit, it's like, for me, it was like, man, you wanted to be in a culture. It was intentional to be in this culture, like, this music culture, what I mean. My parents met in the record store. But it's, cra- I'm for me, when I hear... Mathematics and computer science, even engineering. I'm like, why is he not going after the bag? And it makes sense to me because now the bag wasn't there though. That's not where the real bag was. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Where now it, where it, it really come from? If you know me, like it really come from. I'm a maybe second or third generation entrepreneur, or hustler. My mm-hmm. father was always an entrepreneur and hustler, so I can't hustle math. Okay. Math is part of hustling. Right. But I gotta go get a job. To do the right. You know what I mean? Constructed time and all that shit. So how can I work for myself? Well, being in the industry is working for yourself. Right. This is you. Facts. hundred percent. It's all on you. If it yeah. works, it's on you. If it don't work, it's on you. This ain't and your be, team. This ain't a joke. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not a joke. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's on you. Like no, I, I rather I rather assume responsibility, full responsibility. For the failure or success of my shit, rather than have somebody tell me, or did somebody hire you, right? Yeah. You do all the work. Right. Great job. Thank you. Then they go on camera. Yeah. I did a great fucking job. Yeah. I'm nah, the man. Fact. You know what I'm saying? Nah, like, fact. that never sat right with me. Now, we're not above that if we got to do that because we got to make ends meet, but I'd rather take that risk any day. Mm-hmm. I've become very comfortable with taking risks. It used to be a little shaking hand. Now I just take them every day, like, fuck it. Let me see what this crypto about. Let me see what this about. Let me see. But you in that position though. You know what I'm saying? Nah. I, I feel like nah, I don't even nah, not say that because a lot right. of people out there, I, I just don't I be trying to be careful with my words because like you can take some risks though. You can I take took risks. Them when I couldn't. Okay. I took outside 
nowhere to live type risk. You got to take them if you believe yeah, in yourself. Ain't, yeah, ain't niggas niggas. nobody going to believe in you like you. 100%. It ain't going to happen. So let's rewind this back. So your pops was an entrepreneur. What's, you, you, are you half African? Yeah, he was African and he, he like imported and exported like all the dashiki, okay. kufis and all that shit in the 90s. So I would see it. And the thing was, there's there's no cap or limitation. You know, with business, you're going to have some heartache, too. You're going to, yeah. you know, bump your head and shit, but there's no cap or limitation. Then there's also a, a, a real healthy space where I don't feel like working today. Mm. You can just do that but, when you work for yourself. I might work 45 days straight, no days off. And I might say, I'm taking a vacation. I'm not waiting till they tell me to take a vacation to heal my body and heal my mind. I'm going to go take that shit right now. So that freedom is important to me and probably many other hustlers and entrepreneurs. But I also always salute working class individuals because that takes a certain type of strength as well. You no, know what I'm course. saying? Yeah. Like a certain type of structure. So I salute them. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying that if in your heart and your mind you want to do something, you got to do it. Mm-hmm. There's no one owe you shit. See what I'm saying? So I understood that. Lost my parents at the age of 20 as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I had to take risks. I didn't have a backup plan. I couldn't call mom and dad. So that's why I was saying, like. You ain't had no choice. I didn't have no choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a choice. I could have. I did suit and tie up. I did that shit. And it's like, this is cool, but I know that I'm doing it for one reason. It's strictly just for the money. Oof. You see what I'm saying? But now it's like, I'm involved in, I've helped change people's lives, which helped change their family lives. I helped change people's mindsets. I've helped people become rich. I've helped people. You see what I'm saying? I'm helping people and continuously aiming to do that even more. So that's what's most important to me. No, 100%. So, what? because when I hear like African anything, right? Like I hear like go to school, get a good job. So I'm thinking like your parents would be pushing you away from that. But now mm-hmm. I, I understand that your parents father was, was. Parents was hustlers, but they had jobs too. Okay. But I think you should, I think everybody should do both. Nah. If you've had a job your whole life and you never hustled or been an entrepreneur, you're missing out. If you're an entrepreneur and you never had a job, you're missing out because you might take for granted what the fuck is going on. You see what I'm saying? So for us in our household, it was like, the only rule is you gotta do something. You know what I mean? You gotta make it happen however it's gonna happen. And for me, I just, I told you before we started, like I'm a thinker, like I think about everything. I wanna know, I'm nosy and this and that. So I'm just like, nah, man, you got people out here really with their businesses like playing a different game like you can't, God bless Jeff Bezos' workers, but Jeff Bezos is on some other shit yeah. that you just can't do working. You see what I'm saying? So for me, that has to be, you got to aim for, what they say, aim for the stars and then you might hit the clouds or whatever the fuck yeah. the saying is. You know it's what I'm saying? Something like that, aim for the moon, get a star, fall something fall like a star that. or some shit like that. You know that. what I mean? So that's always been my mentality. And I, you just have to be willing to take risks. You know, the crazy thing is in the streets, people take, petty risk every day every fucking day. you know what i'm saying like risk that could have you cased up and gone man. you know what i mean so you got to be willing to take other risks like all this shit too man is not it ain't too much of nothing i get it when somebody say well i can't risk this last bit of money because this last bit of money pays my rent and this is where i live that's responsible that makes sense but I think that that faith driven thing, you know how many people were facing eviction, and figured that shit out. You know, people was homeless and figured that shit out. Seen you it. can't get too attached to that thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollars. Cause if you do, you'll never see 30 or 300 or anything past that. You can't get too attached to that shit. It's all material shit. If we leave here tomorrow, what the fuck? So you, you see what I'm saying? You got your name doing parties in college. That's how you really got lit. It was parties in college. And then the college radio shit. It was college radio. There was college mixtapes. That was probably outside of the parties, the biggest thing, college mixtapes. And um, basically when I got back, so it was like, I'm at Tuskegee, we're at this HBCU and we dominate the scene. And it's like, I really could just stay here and dominate the scene, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But I'm not from here, you know what I mean? I wanna go back home, I wanna go to Atlanta and see what's going on in Atlanta because this is where I'm from. Right. Let me see what the fuck is going on. You see what I'm saying? So I come back and 
immediately get on the grind on making mixtapes, passing on mixtapes, having club owners tell me no. Everybody told me no, 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 no. That's why what you yeah. what you were saying made sense. <laughs> like no, 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 no. To the point like I subconsciously in my head would ask a question expecting a no. no. Yeah, I had to kind of get out of that <laughs> mentality of you know what I'm gonna take a different approach like. I took a completely different approach of always wanting something from people that I didn't know and started to offer what, how I could help them. Yo, how can I life. do this? How can I, you know what I'm saying? Can I, let me get some of them flyers, pass them off. Which, I ain't got no money. I don't need no money. Mm -hmm. Relationship. It's crazy that you say that, bro, because like, you know, um, I'm, I'm like that myself and a lot of my friends that don't get it always be like, man, you can't be too humble. Like you're telling yourself, sure, you can make so much money if you just, Da 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 da. Now understand that like the relationships that I built, that, that I built just by offering my service for free, mm -hmm. I've gotten so so much further. Like them same friends that come to me and be like, "Yo, I ain't never see a nigga like you network. Like you'll meet a nigga today and tomorrow he letting you hold his motherfucking Lambo or some shit because it's like, bro, I always off. But these only come to the people that's offering your service for free. And not saying, of course, you got to be in a different space. You got to know when to offer your service for free because I ain't just telling niggas go out there and do free work, you feel me? But like, it's, I, I, it resonates well when you say things like that. So question, when you was in Tuskegee, when you was at Tuskegee, you was already lit? At nah, hell no. And I was, I'm a college kid with turntables. I mean, you could be I lit. I mean, I was a cool nigga, but I, I'm a college kid with turntables in my dorm. I'm okay. broke as fuck. I'm but, not broke. But I'm you broke lit, as fuck. Lit as in what's what's the popular? Nah, I don't, I don't think I'm ever the popular because I was quiet. Motherfuckers didn't know I DJ mm. till they came to the club. So I, I only you know asked that because when you came back to the A, right? It's like yeah. niggas is saying no. But I guess if I'm trying to see where you was at when you came back to the A, for example, like I'm home, I'm lit, I get up this bitch, nobody know me. So it's like I it's got, really like a start over. I got bro. six months to figure it out. Mm. Basically, where I was staying, I was staying with my sister. Salute to her. You got six months. That's pretty dope, though. Shout out to your sister. Shout Six out to her. <laughs> but she was an entrepreneur. Okay, okay. And my family, a real estate agent. She's one of the dopest in Atlanta. And I'm like, damn, that month four gets frustrating. It's like, now I got two months to figure it out. <laughs> I'm about to get a I'm job. Out of top. <laughs> but that's the faith, man. You know, I ended up uh, touring with, kind of haphazardly touring with Montel Jordan. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, I went and tried out, tour Montel Jordan. Went through that. You know, working at Guitar Center, some odd jobs and shit. Um, at the same time, making these mixtapes. So these people that's in my circle, Crime Mob, Trillville, all these people, I'm not knowing that they're going to blow up. These are people. Up. But that was a little later. Was later. But this is the crunk era, Trillville, Crime Mob, all that shit. And these people became, these people ended up making like classic hit records that lasted the, you got the, a lot of the test of time. So <laughs> like Nuck If You Buck. I'm playing Nuck If You Buck when they like little kids coming up to me and I'm playing Nuck If You Buck and I'm like, this hard and I'm helping to break this record, me and other DJs in the city and then my homies, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't know they, I didn't know we were a part of a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm yeah. thinking Nuck If You Buck, six months, they play that in a college hit record. Party to this day. That's what I'm saying. I didn't know it was a timeless record and my voice would be on the mixtapes, mm -hmm. you know, on these records and shit. I didn't know what the fuck was, I'm just young and trying to figure this shit out. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So question, at that time, were you, were you making these mixtapes and doing a club thing while you was working at Guitar Center? All that. Yo, how frustrating is it to have this job, right? And it's like, you can't be too cocky because like you working at Guitar Center, you got all your friends that see you and yeah. shit. But yeah. at the same time, they hear you and they like, they hear DJ Scream like, DJ Scream is lit, lit. But they come to Guitar Center, it's like, the fuck? Yeah, no, that's that's humbling. It's a reality though. It's That's like I, I used to tell my friends, like, bro, what you doing here, nigga? I need some money. What's up? You got something for me? You got to play for me? Otherwise, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was many. It was many nights of working at Guitar Center, going in a uh, car. You know what I mean? Brushing my teeth down and shit, eating my food, changing my clothes in the club parking lot, mm -hmm. going in there to be DJ Screen when I just left Guitar Center, smelling crazy, getting drunk. Taking a nap back to Guitar backwards. Center. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? It was many nights like that. So it, it, I just think that it comes down to people's journeys and how bad you want it. You know what I mean? Not 100%. Yo, um, you, one thing I hear you talk about a lot, and you just talked about this with Pee Wee, mm -hmm. uh, this um, like new Atlanta versus old Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And um, every time you talk about it, you specifically always like point out before the Olympics. Yeah. Like that being like. That was the, it. Yeah. Uh, that was the change in time in Atlanta. My nigga, that was 96. 
Yeah, that was a changing point in Atlanta. I'm from Atlanta. You must be just an old nigga. Nah, it's, it's <laughs> 96, old I'm thinking like, bro, I was 96, five. you got to understand what was going on. Before was, 96, it wasn't cool. You came to Atlanta for free, nigga. Mm-hmm. In the party. Okay. After 96, there was a lot of real estate. That, like, people moved to Atlanta. So it's no longer just coming to Atlanta for free, nigga. That's why you hear Goody Mar rapping about it. Mm-hmm. 96, 96. This was the year when shit changed for us. There was like some street wars. Out of t- There's a lot that went on after 96. 96 was a defining moment. You had uh, like different music eras. Lil John, Jeezy, Future. You know what I'm saying? Music eras is cool, but I'm talking about when the city changed. Mm. Politically, everything. Like that shit changed after 96. So do you think it changed for like, because I'm, I'm, I'm from up north, right? So I'm, I'm from Baltimore, mm. so I don't really know too much about down south at all. Real. Mm-hmm. So when it, when you mm-hmm. say it changed was was all the bad crime and shit happening before ninety six or that came after ninety six? Well, there was always that going on in Atlanta, but what I'm saying is when you created the black mecca of people coming from everywhere, okay. like black Hollywood type of thing. That it was ninety six when all that shit. That's why Outkast and Goody Mob rapped about it so much. Like mm-hmm. y'all finna make a lot of fucking money off of this Olympics. Well, we wonder how much it's gonna go back into the city. Damn. Really, it was a play to open up the city for the world, come to Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? That's when our population skyrocketed and everything. Damn. So how was that? Like, how did that impact you at that point, I guess? I mean, I'm younger. I don't think it impacted me. I think it impacted our household. Like, was it just became to see it and acknowledge Inflation. It? Shit mm-hmm. went up. Shit became more expensive. The properties became more expensive. Like, we saw inflation for sure. I didn't understand all the way what was going on. I just know, damn, shit costs more, and I'm hearing my family talking about it. Damn. You know what I mean? So... But I think it was a blessing, you know what I'm saying? Opening up the doors of Atlanta to the world and having people come t- to Atlanta was, it, I think it, it also put a magnifying glass on what we were already doing musically. We were already kind of like the R&B mecca, LaFace Records and all that shit, TLC, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. But it kind of put a magnifying glass on Atlanta, and a lot of people, especially black people, would use Atlanta as the place that you come to to kind of like start over or breed opportunity. You know what I mean? No, that's great because I, I guess like from my my vantage point, right? Like I'm thinking of like that if you want to move anywhere to like start over or start a journey is New York because I'm up north, right? Mm-hmm. So while we there, I just want to use this time to, to soak as much knowledge as I can. Do you remember like the first time Jay Z came to the South mm-hmm. and like how how was that for? Because I remember I remember one time a lot of people think it was um doing uh H or Bun B. When he made that mm. big pimp and shit, but it was before that. Well, Jay Z had a uh, reasonable doubt, so I can imagine. Again, I'm too young to get in clubs and all that shit at that time, but I can imagine like around that time was probably around the era when he came. I can't even remember the clubs, but there were some legendary clubs in the mid '90s that artists would come to perform. The Atrium being one of them. The Atrium mm. is like the only spot I think that, or the last spot that Tupac and Big performed together. This footage of that, like that on the YouTube. You know what I'm saying? But uh yeah, I don't I don't remember when Jay Z first came. I remember when I first heard Jay Z and for us we didn't have we had like college radio. You okay. know what I'm saying? So that's when we heard Jay Z and Biggie and all that shit. First eighty eight point five and all that shit. How like, did y'all like when you heard it, like what was your mindset? Because again, up north everybody's already thinking like Jay Z is that nigga. You know, I, I kinda gravitated towards Nas and Biggie before Jay Z to be honest. Okay. Like I was kinda like on their music and I think that a lot of like uh I remember Atlanta, like, a lot of Atlanta was on Wu-Tang and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the shit they fuck with. It wasn't that they didn't fuck with Jay-Z. It was just that, you know what I mean? Like, I think he kind of all the way hit in the South. That's why people probably think Big Pimper. Big, yeah, Big Pimper. Okay. Money ain't a thing, shit like that. I think that's when he started to all the way connect in the South. Because you got to think, another uh, real powerful era was the Bad Boy era. Yeah, so Jay-Z nah, was, was there, yeah. but the Bad Boy <laughs> bad ran boy shit. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, Bad Boy ran shit. So that's kind of like how it was with us coming up. Damn, bro. It's crazy because so much it's just so much wisdom and knowledge out there. Like, even when I, I heard you say, um, when people think of, like, Atlantic music, or like, Atlantic music, people were, like, they were saying, one time they were saying, like, it's never going to be a new, not, a, not, never going to be another T.I., right? Mm. Like, T.I. was, like, one of the faces that helped put Atlanta on. Mm. But, like, I'm thinking, like, damn, why wouldn't they say that about Outkast? Like, is that still one of them things you feel like they still don't get the, the credit they deserve? Or, like, or you you, you don't it's think a, it's it was... a different era. It's kind of like, why ain't more people talking about Big Daddy Kane and Rakim? 
It's a different era. Okay. Everybody okay. goes okay. immediately to the greatest of all time, Jay Z and Nas and so forth. And yeah, for sure. But you skip the whole era of people who they looked up to. It's just, it's just, it's just like time and it's just like time passes. You understand what I'm saying? I think I only say that because I can resonate with Outkast music. It might have been later, yeah. but I, like I was around. I can, I, I can remember Outkast music before I remember early Jay Z. Yeah, I'm with you. So I'm from Atlanta, I get it. So that's why I'm looking at them. And like, even I can recognize that shit. Andre 3000 is super special. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, why, why do you think being from down here, it was, I guess, I don't know, to the, to the different generation. I'm trying to be mm. careful with my words. It was, it was T.I. before it was Outkast and most people. I think a big of- part of that is the fact that if you, took, if you look at the Outkast brand, it's legendary, but they stopped putting out as much music. Okay. That's another thing. Like, if you stop putting out music, then you got to think the younger people are not getting your music. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So I think that that's a big part of it. Like, that Ray 3000 went to pursue other things. Another big name in Atlanta when it comes to music that Dog did his thing on some other shit, Luda. But we don't look at Luda like a rap star like that. We look at Luda as Fast and Furious movie star nigga. Ooh. I'm just telling you how most people, people look at it. Okay, because I feel like Ludacris. Now, my, what, what, what I will say is Ludacris to me is, is my opinion. His features is way better than his like singles. Like this nigga can rap, rap. Yeah, <laughs> he can do his thing. He can do his thing. But think about it, bro. When you think about Ice T and Ice Cube, you don't think primarily about yeah. their music. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You see what I'm saying? You're right. So that's all I'm getting at. Like, that's 100. percent Damn, that's crazy, bro. Because it's that like. Down South got a lot of, like, heritage. You know what I'm saying? Like, but mm-hmm. you wouldn't know that unless you just, unless you're being intentional about learning about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But um, I wanted to talk to you about uh, Hood Rich ENT. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that stands out to me now is Hood Rich Radio. Mm-hmm. Right? Because it, it would stand out to me because I'm, I do a podcast, Dolo. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I did radio, WKYS in DC, mm-hmm. um, WEAA at, at a college uh, and Morgan, at Morgan. You know what I'm saying? So I've, I've done radio, mm-hmm. but like you said, like I'm, I'm, I, it just means so much more when I can get an interview independently. You know what I'm saying? It's harder. It's harder, mm-hmm. but it means so much yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, because you did it. Yeah, um, you did it. Yeah. You got with Sirius XM first before you was with um the station in Atlanta, right? The mixtape, the whole mixtape buzz led to um you know the serious radio shit. Uh, shouts to my dog Fury Style. Um, and before locally. Yeah, before locally, before a local radio station would touch me, they they gave me my first opportunity. I always salute them for that. Rock with them out. I rocked out with them for fifteen years, and then that led to local radio eventually. You know, what I'm saying like bringing me in and to to do local radio. So that's how that happened. But how was it like? It was Hood Rich Radio something like man? I want this to be my show. Like it was Hood Rich. We had the Hood Rich the brand. You know what I'm saying? So it was like if we're gonna do a radio show, it's gonna be called Hood Rich Radio. So, and it was really just the mixtapes turned into a radio show. That's really what it was. Like it was like when they brought me the series, like we want you to do just like how maybe a woo kid or whoever does it, just do exactly just do your shit. You. you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. don't don't clean it up for radio, make it raw. And that's why people fell in love with it. So instead of listening to mixtapes, you kinda get in this mixtape in a show format with like interviews and all that. Like other a mixed shit. show kinda. It's a mixed show, but it's a show because the difference is I'm not interviewing artists on mixtape. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. now it's Hood Rich Radio where I'm able to like interview artists and do all this other shit and talk about a little bit about the music. So that's what I kind of learned always being into the music, coming in the media. Now you can talk about the music and the behind the scenes and the commentary of sports is just as big as sports on some real shit. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's where yeah, I kind of. I think. You the almost comment- missed me with that. Yeah, the yeah no, the commentary yeah, yeah. is big. Like I'm waking up to see, Stephen A. Smith is. I was just about. I'm waking up to see Skip and Shannon every day. You're mm-hmm. Right. You're right. Mm-hmm. You're right. Damn. That's damn. That's a great mm-hmm. point. But I'm I'm more so worried about like the business aspect side of it. Like, where did you come in and you was like, did you ask for ownership of like, yo, Hood Rich Radio was my thing? Like, why? Well, well, yeah, of course, Hood Rich Radio gonna own it. But I think for them, I think for them, like at that time, the only people that had radio shows on like a, a satellite radio was there was drama shit and there was my shit. Mm. So these are the only two shows where you're really getting like Southern music. 
you gotta think when you look at like serious and all that shit, you getting like oh uh, a lot more Woo Kid and uh Ski from out west and DJ Envy at the time was on serious and they're playing hits, but this pretty much East Coast focus. So people I'm I'm on I'm on Hood Rich Radio playing the shit out of Boosie. Mm. And I'm literally getting people with MySpace at the I'm time. I'm from Baltimore, though, so you can't. He, yeah, but I'm that's saying. Our, that's our godfather. No, I get it. <laughs> but, I'm have, but I get what like, you're saying. New Yorkers hitting me like, why are you playing hear, so um, much fucking Boosie, man? This shit, oh, what the from fuck? New York, they saying that? I'm saying this is MySpace days. And I'm like, nigga, because. They was asking is, for Boosie from New York? Oh, why are Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see that so MySpace. Because they want to hear um, uh, Free, uh, what's his name? At that Wavy. time. What's the nigga name? Wavy nigga, shit. Max B and shit. Mac, yeah, they want to yeah, hear Max B. And I played, yeah. I played some of that shit too, cause I hood, so Hood Rich Radio was primarily from the South, but it also was like street. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So it comes from mixtapes. So yeah, my mixtapes would be the best of Southern street music. But if Max B or French Montana, whoever was jamming and shit, I'm gonna put them on a the mixtape. I ain't discriminating. But we're like the only people playing. That. I'm playing the hell out of Gucci and all this other shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, yeah, man. That was, it's crazy because like being from Baltimore, we up north, but man, like Yo Gotti, Boosie, like the Project Pat, like these niggas were like our, mm -hmm. we looked, we, we looked up because I guess, I guess it's because like Baltimore is such a, like a rugged city. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like everybody trapping. Like, mm -hmm. so we can relate to all of that shit. You feel mm -hmm. me? Like, so I mm -hmm. think it's crazy that you saying that like, man, niggas is asking why you playing Boosie, niggas. Where I'm from, we want to hear that shit. Mm -hmm. Like all of that. I remember, yeah, no, nah, I feel like, I feel like the DMV is like, Connected with the South, yeah, you know what I'm sure. saying? Like it's always kind of like that synergy and shit. I remember so. when um, have did you ever, did you ever not like somebody like Project because it was old music? I asked that because I remember when Boosie first got a Gangsta Grill, and like, but most of the songs that was on it I already heard because I was a Boosie mm, fan. Because you Boosie fan, like yeah. it was like what the fuck? Like, yeah, he's just trying to bring more light to that music. He yeah, wanted like, everybody to hear. Did it. I, you ever felt that way? From, or you? I mean, you've been in the game for a long yeah, time. Yeah, so you know, I, if I. I think I like the art of mixtapes. Mm. So somebody can take um, music. One DJ can take some music and create something different than another DJ. So that That's don't really fact. bother me like that because okay. I'm a fan of like mixtapes and the art of that. But as a fan of just the music, I feel where you're coming from. I see what you're saying because like um, it's same with freestyles. Like I um, I used to do freestyles in Baltimore. Like I was like I had a a, a big platform doing the freestyles, mm. and for me. I would rather you come with something that's already done. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I understand. Polished, it. yeah. You feel me? But like to your average viewer, they like. I want to hear new shit. Right. They want, I'm like, y'all want to see a freestyle. I want to hear a freestyle. I want you to go off the top of the dome not knowing, like, bro, there's mm -hmm. an art to this shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I don't, it ain't like that. Mm -hmm. But it's crazy that we talking mixtapes, bro. Um, Funk Flex. Uh, I know you probably get this question a lot. Funk Flex, even DJ Drama, shit. Um, even DJ Holiday. You know what I'm saying? I feel like these are guys that, like, made their names off of uh, um, mixtapes. And I feel like to the outside, to the outside people, right? Mm. They were all of the, everybody would probably name those DJs before they were named a DJ screen. Mm. Do you like, does that ever, you ever think about that? Mm -mm. The, the one, one thing that, one thing that for me is important is I just focus on me. All of, all of them is the homies. I focus on me and I'm still here. Like they're yeah. still here too, but I just focus on me. Like the, my most important thing is, am I still here? Am I still in the relevant. conversation? Am I relevant? Like that's all that matters to me. So, and I, I, I kind of thought she was going to say that even like with DJ Khaled, I was, I forgot that name, but I kind of felt, I felt like you was going to say that, but let's reverse it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Cause like you are relevant. You got this big facts podcast. We're going to talk about that. We ain't even mm -hmm. get to, we, we still on old shit. Like mm -hmm. we, how, we, we like 30 minutes in, we ain't even mm -hmm. get to the new shit, but mm -hmm. you got big facts. Um, podcast, uh, shit, you, dirty sprite. All of this is relatively new, right? So, you you still you still popping, you still relevant. But what if it wasn't? What what if you wasn't re relevant, right? Like, what, what well, do you I wouldn't be doing it? as a as a again. I'm a businessman and a hustler and an entrepreneur. At first, I would do whatever it is that I can be relevant in. Mm -hmm. That's just me. So game. for me, it's never like that's game. I never, that, that's the thing, like everybody has their own aim. And for me, the aim is like, I look at legacy and catalog. Okay, when you play Shawty Low, Day No, or Dun Dun, mm. timeless. <laughs> when you play Nuck If You Buck, timeless. Shouts to my dolls and my uh, collective uh, 
hood originally, like Pretty Boy Tank. Like he, I remember the day he sent me swag surfing. Like, so pause, 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 pause. Like, well, let's, let's, let's not skip over that. So done, done it all. Yeah, it's timeless. That, they know you, you. Rest, they know done, done it all. You did that. Shotty Low, I'm the man. One and two. I thought Those come from my mixtapes. I thought that you grabbed Shorty Low after that. No, but Low is my damn. brother. No, I did Low's first mixtape, <laughs> second mixtape, last mixtape. That's my real brother. Like I toured the world with them. It's my real brother. We sat in there, me and Rip, and watched him. Shouts to the whole D4L in 2016. Like well, that's my real brother. You know what did I'm saying? You, I mean, I know you're older now, and um, did you at, at, at any point were you frustrated because of the? The beef that was going on with Ti and um, mm, you know, another one of my brothers, which is MLK, is Ti's DJ. So in the midst of that, I would get calls from Tip sometime, and it was a beef. But I think the beauty of those beefs back then, everybody lived to tell the story. Okay, they had their issues, you know what I'm saying. But I don't think it, it didn't get to the point where both or one of them is dead from that beef. You know what right. I'm saying? So we talked about that at the Big Facts Live and. T.I. kind of broke down from his perspective how the whole thing went. I know just being close to low how his feelings were, but at the end of the day, they end up living in the same neighborhood. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I kind of just preach now. Like, man, you know, some of these beefs that, you know, the whole op shit and all this shit, like, live to tell the story because you don't feel the same way today that you felt five years ago, right? You don't have the same mindset. You don't, you grow. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, there's been people I don't fuck with, but five years later, I'm like, eh. Right. Then we might get to talking and then we might get money together. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of got to be how it is. So, now nah, I never really got involved. I ended up doing tip mixtapes and Grand Hustle mixtapes and all this shit in the midst of that. Man, it's crazy, bro. Because, like I said, there's so much there's so much to go into, bro. Mm -hmm. But let's go let's go back to it. Let's finish, the though, because there's, there's yeah, timeless, yeah, go, 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 timeless go. mixtapes. Like, <laughs> I get it. I did. I was the first nigga to do a Soldier Boy mixtape. Superman? Yep. I did the first Soldier Boy mixtape. But I'm about to go there. So you know what I'm saying? I'm about to go there. It's a lot of mixtapes. And when people start asking me, I'll fucking forget. But it's like, yeah, low, Rocco. You know what I'm saying? Me and Rocco got busy. Me and Gucci got some classics. Plies. They just said yesterday was the 10-year anniversary that Rick Ross was classic as fuck. I'm not saying it because I'm a part of it, but that Rich Forever was classic as fuck. Migos, young rich niggas. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They can tell you the story behind Travis that. Travis Porter shit too? Travis Porter, more so DJ Spins. You know what I'm saying? DJ Spins was more so there with like Travis Porter and Rich Kids and all that shit because that was more of his era. But yeah, Rocco, um, Project Pat, Juicy J. Um, so you tell going to name all these hits, right? Because this is what we're not going to do, bro. We ain't about to be on no bullshit. You're going to name all these hits. You're going to tell me. If niggas talking mixtape kings, well, you don't I, feel I, no I, like, I, nah, you know, a year ago during the pandemic, they went through their whole mixtape king and shit. You not, and you know, you and don't then, sit down and, like that. How you not and, mention and, me? And no, but listen, I'm gonna tell you my fuel. They didn't mention me in the mixtape shit, and I said, all right, now y'all just fucked up. Now y'all just now it's another twenty years. <laughs> so now I gotta now I gotta keep going. Like maybe they won't mention me in podcasts either. Maybe they won't mention this, but I really don't give a fuck because it's not about really. Those analysts, it's like the people analysts. You know okay, what I'm saying? Like, bro, I have like a real core. I don't know who got what going on. I have a real core following of people that follow no. me. Like, <laughs> I didn't buy followers and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like these people fuck with me. Like I go to the grocery store to be normal. I go sit down with my wife to be normal. And people come up and tell me I'm a legend over and over again. I receive it. I appreciate it. But I don't focus on what I did yesterday. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Right. That's why I'm not above coming to sit with you. This mm. is a young nigga. He doing his thing. I want in. Let's go. Appreciate that. Let's see what he got going on. You know what I'm saying? I like that's the type that. of person sure. I am. So that a lot of people have told me, man, Scream was my first interview. Mm. I'll pull up to the college radio station because I remember being in the college radio station, like twiddling my thumbs, like, what are we gonna talk about <laughs> this week? Ain't nobody fucking with us. Uh shit. You know what I mean? Like, so that's just that's just what's most important to me, man. Doing that, I uh, finally got a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Uh being in the community. Being in the community and shit like that, you know what I'm saying, is what's most important to me. You know what I'm saying? So I finally start, start, start. I finally just start, you know what I'm saying, putting the, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I finally just start kind of putting the name with the brand of the foundation and community work I did, you know what I'm saying? Because for years I just did shit in the community from my heart, which I still do. But somebody was like, nobody's ever going to know what you did or this or that or that if you don't put some type of, so that's how the Screen Foundation came about. But, bro, there's a lot of mixed. It is. Getting back to that. But that's, why I broke, but that's there's why I brought future, it up. There's Dirty Sprite. Shouts to uh, Esco X-Rated. There's, there's fucking 
uh, being Wookie got busy for a second, did like a Snoop mixtape or T Pain. Like I'm gonna uh, tell you my uh, opinion. Tech Nine. Let me tell you my opinion. Please, I might I might be wrong though. Mm. I think uh when we talk about the king of mixtapes, they get the credit because I think it's newer. So what happens is a lot of people. Were, What's the saying? It ain't what you've done for me. It what ain't what you have done for me lately. Well, no, I think, yeah. listen. Let's not ever... Because you got a lot of niggas before, like, before niggas knew about them. Well, no, for sure. Let's not, let's not ever um, not understand what... And shouts to the homie. Let's not ever not understand what drama and Gangsta Grills was. That and shit respect, was... And that's my dog. Different. Yeah, yeah, respect, respect. That's my dog. Now, everything past that is... You can bring up Smalls. You can bring up so many people. You know what I'm saying? Like everything past that is a titter and a tatter and a tatter. But how many people were able to do a mixtape project and had the respect to do a mixtape project with Gucci Man and Jeezy before they set their differences aside? Hmm. Go on, name two people. I only, could, I only could think of one person that even got them to talk together, and that was on some finesse shit. That was on the radio. I think it was that was drama. drama. Yeah. yeah, but he has mixtapes with Jeezy. He has mixtapes with Gucci. I have mixtapes with Jeezy. I have mixtapes with Gucci. So let me ask you this. And that's big in the mixtape culture because you got to think some people is stop. not. Some people is not going to. Some people are not gonna do that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, he be with Gucci. Or he be with him. Or, yeah, yeah. We get we get mixed up in all that shit in the in the mixtape world. We get mm-hmm. mixtape mixed up in that shit. Mm-hmm. You just ask me. How was it with Tip? I'm still like talking to Tip. Doing work. we got to do work. Mm-hmm. At that time, you got to come through hood rich to get hot in the streets. So another thing that I also pride myself in is the fact that I did take a step back to focus on other shit. And oh, bro, I want to be the old nigga in the way. Let DJ Spin shine. Let hood rich king shine. Let Swamp Izzo shine. Let them niggas shine. That's the type of nigga I am. Right. More of a dipset camera mentality. So I take more pride in looking up and saying, Yeah. Doing his thing. I could have stood in the way and never had a hood rich. This, this is me. A lot of old niggas. You hear the young niggas talk about that though. You hear so the that's young not niggas? me. Yeah. That's never been me. I've stepped out the way plenty of times. Like, bro, this Keem. Keem is, like you say, lit. This nigga lit. Mm. I'm finna get out the way because this nigga lit. You see what I'm saying? So, but in my blessings, I got to have a new obstacle. You see what I'm saying? Let me go see if I can do radio because they told me I couldn't do radio. You can't be a mixtape DJ. You didn't go to school for communications and all this shit, right? <laughs> you can't do man. radio. <laughs> You're not a journalist. I did it. Thanks. You know what I'm saying? The high ranking radio show that lasted almost five years. Well, five years locally and 15 years nationally. Oh, you can't do a um, pod, podcast. You, what the fuck you think you're doing? You do your file. You're, you're, you're tripping. Me, Bank, Jade, the team doing a podcast. Top 10 music podcast. You can't be a fucking fine. What you fucking think? Your financial literacy and shit. <laughs> fuck you, motherfucker. You don't know nothing about crypto. getting crypto, crypto money, nigga. And NFT money and stock money. So that's what I said. When you tell me I can't do some shit, which is what I wait on, mm. then I'm going to do it. Now, I'm not going to rap and do certain shit that I don't want to do. But it's like everybody should use I that think as they fuel. Nah, you might, you might. that's more for you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do the break dance. <laughs> Yo, question: You did, you did, um, Dirty Sprite one. Mm. Or you was on it with with Esco, but even before that, see, that's the thing. I did one thousand. Mm. Future shit. That was Future's first mixtape. Thousand, and it was jamming like fuck, and then um. Like Esco and X Rated, we were really in the element. Like Esco had a strip club and X Rated, they had strip clubs going crazy. So when we came back for the Dirty Sprite shit, Future wanted me to be a part of it, but he wanted to bring them in too, which made sense because I'm I'm not no strip club DJ. Like mm-hmm. this is a different aspect. They can play your shit every night in strip clubs. So yeah, Dirty Sprite was when I heard Dirty Sprite, like when shouts to Rip, like when I heard Dirty Sprite, I was like, this nigga's different. So like I knew, I, I knew. I knew it's so many, and I don't want to leave anybody out. When Rocco told me about Future, and when I heard Future's shit, and I saw his recording process and how hungry it was, I was like, this nigga's different. He's not a nigga that we're just doing a mixtape. Uh, rest in peace, rest his soul. Um, when I did um, one of the first, I don't know if it was the first, Young Dolph's mixtape, I remember calling Rip like, bro, this is different. Like, you need to 
we doing so many mixtapes, we didn't get to like really ride to all of them. They should have hired you as an A and R at this point. Well, then, you know what I mean. But again, ownership. We had our own shit. We have hood rich, so we're doing marketing. We're doing consulting. We're doing a lot of shit behind the scenes. We're doing okay for ourselves. So again, limit me to. I'll be an A and R. Bring you this music. You know what I'm saying. And then there's somebody else that kind of ultimately gets the credit. I get a plaque. I get mm-hmm. some money. You know what I'm saying. But it's kind of like. Shouts to Gazi. Me and Gazi had a long conversation one time from Empire about how he was like, you built your own brand. Fuck you need. Get your own brand. Like people know you in states to states to states. Just use your own brand and use it and grow. You know what I'm saying? So it's just certain times I say that just to say like, you like low was special. You low was special. Dolph, that, that was a moment. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to him. Uh, the Migos was a moment. Corey B brought him in. I met the Migos. I heard the record. I told the engineer, yo, clean up the record. We're going to play it right now. They're like, you're going to play it right now? Like, yeah, we're going to play Like, this shit is hard. That's when they had the bando shit. They was working, Rapping, hitting all the clubs. The they brought, they, they tell the story, if you look at our interview, of them bringing me the original wire in, and they felt like, damn, he ain't really moved. Because it's hard to move me musically. I think in that, in that space, I was just kind of like, this shit cool. I know y'all can do better. That's the type of nigga I am. That's how a lot of those mixtape projects when people say, well, what did you do? Just yell on them? No, I told a lot of niggas they music one not and they called and threatened my life and all that shit, and they went back and made the music better. I told, um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And y'all were able to go jam and reap the benefits of riding to it. It's crazy because like even being honest, being an honest person like in radio, is people always try to look at it as hating. Like, no, nah, I'm mm. just being real. But it, it, it be them songs that still hit. But like, I st- for example, Trap Beckham, right? I remember the mm. first time I heard, um, mm. like, I'm no DJ Spring, but I, like, I remember when he brought it to Baltimore, he played mm. uh, Birthday Chick. Mm. And I hated that shit. I'm mm. like, bro, like, I, I didn't care. Mm. But you fast forward, <laughs> that shit is one of the biggest Smash. birthday songs Smash. ever. So it's like, Smash. sometimes niggas can be wrong, he, but you be wrong. I, look, listen, my, I think one of, somebody super young sent me Lil Nas X, way early, old time, oh, right? man. and I was like, "You don't ever be mad at yourself." That was no, way, it, you know, I, I but I respect it. I, I'm I'm here to say I can openly say like I have a up. good hit re- track record, but I, you're not nobody's perfect. Yeah, that's like fact. saying everybody making every shot on the court every night. Like no, that's fact. not a real realistic. So damn. But I was gonna ask you, was you upset? See, see again. I'm just being totally honest, and I know niggas down south is going to hate this. Me. I didn't really care for Dirty Sprite. Like I, I wasn't a future fan. I didn't. Mm. I thought it was cool. Like the racks, like it was cool. You know what I'm saying? Racks on racks. I don't. I don't think that was on Dirty Sprite, but that was cool. But I wasn't. I didn't really care for it like that. Mm. But what, what I love about artists is when I don't like them, and then they make something to force me to like the show. Mm. To show me that nah, nigga, I'm that nigga. So when Dirty Sprite two came out, mm. I'm like, ain't no way the same nigga made this. That's mm. how I looked at it. Well, so you gotta understand when you're an artist where you came from you're making that art based on your where you at okay Ooh. so he in atlanta and he okay. really in atlanta so okay atlanta's fucked up like fucked up like future had it fucked up but then you start getting shows and you move around okay so then then that changes the whole nature of how that happens true story i came to do um hampton homecoming right Have and i'm Have djing yep and uh, I I get it because I'm following them and I know a few of the records, but I'm moving and touring so much at the time I hadn't heard a whole project, so I'm looking up and I'm like, they were like, yeah, the shy glizzy's like, God here, like, <laughs> seriously. I'm like, I yeah, I know that one record. I'm so awesome. I'm like, yeah, you you got it. Like nah. They're like nah, nigga. He he, he can go for an hour. I'm like mm-hmm. an hour. Mm-hmm. I gotta sit around and see this. So I'm watching this shit and I was like, oh, God here. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying. But his music started to grow outside of that DMV because he began to move around. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So I think that's a lot of what it is initially. See, I thrive on that. I thrive on the first project, nigga, straight out the hood. I thrive on that. A lot of times the later projects, I respect them, but I don't thrive on it as much because I'm like, bro, getting his money, I'm happy for him. But I want to hear, I want to hear a nigga from Baltimore that has that lingo that's so strong, I can't understand what he's saying. Okay. You see what I'm saying? I want to hear a nigga from Florida cool. with goals all in his mouth, the dreads, and I don't understand what the fuck he talking about. That's what I thrive on. Now, mm. when they clean it up and make it a little more appealing, it's cool to me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I get what you're that's, that's what I that be on. That underground shit, you really. 
that's what I thrive on. That first project is a motherfucker. People so, always say, bro, why can't you sound like the scream that was talking on Shawty Low mixtapes? Because I was fucked up. I was broke. I didn't have air conditioning. I was fucked up. That was a different scream. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm piecing it together. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm still hungry on some other shit, but I'm not like that type of hungry no more. Like I can actually go eat. You know what I'm saying? You're getting podcast money now. It, but it's just different. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? It's just <laughs> different. Like that, that voice was angry. Like I was mad at motherfuckers. Like I'm mad. I'm broke. So question, you wasn't broke. So because when I think about it, me, as if I was a DJ, I'm hearing Dirty Sprite 2. I'm like, fuck, why didn't get that call? You wasn't thinking? You, that well, ain't Dirty dope. Sprite. Dirty Sprite. You, you mean, oh, when, you, when they put it out as an album? Yeah, Dirty the Sprite 2. One? Bro, bro, just grew. And I think that the nature of, I think that the nature of how the industry moved just grew. Like, it moved to streaming. So it's kind of like, see, you got to think, we were the gatekeepers. Labels would try to, like, slow down artists and do all this shit. You know what I'm saying? And for us, we could just go hit the streets. We ain't got to clear samples. We ain't got to worry about none of this shit. We just go flood the streets, the flea markets, the barbershops, the salons, all that shit. And we could have your record hot in three days. Mm. That's what the mixtape DJs, not just me, many of us did. You know what I'm saying? It was like a organized situation. So by the time it gets to Dirty Sprite 2, I mean, bro's on another planet. I'm running to him in the airport i can't be mad he's going to pick up money, a lot more money than me but he's going to pick up money i'm going overseas to pick up money it worked you know what i'm saying my name is on this shit i'm growing he's grown to be the future the influence he's had on everybody you gotta think i was there to do mixtapes with a lot of niggas that in this streaming era it's like the fans begging the fans are begging like let's bring mixtapes back but the reality is like that was free well, it was free and you, but they could still make it work if they wanted to. But it was a time and an era. You got to respect that. We can't bring back Michael Jordan versus fucking Isaiah Thomas or whatever the fuck. Yeah. That was a moment. We yeah, got to respect. The and, the, uh, and the Pistons. It's, yeah. it's a moment that yeah. you got to look back to. So when I look oh, back at it, on it, not just my work, but the whole thing is like, yeah, man, that mixtape shit was like really it. You know what right. I'm saying? And hopefully we'll have something like that to repeat itself in history, but a lot of us is in just, just different spaces. I like what Drum did with Tyler the Creator last year, like a mixtape album. I've been talking to that some people hard. about doing some shit like that, but I don't want to go back in time. Bro, I have no desire to go but back we in can't, time. I, yo, thank God for podcasts because we could just chop it up like this because there's mm -hmm. so much to talk about. Like, because even I'm thinking about, we still talking about mixtape scream, right? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about even MMG. Stream, right? So mm -hmm. when you got signed to MMG, I'm thinking about these times. All right. Mm -hmm. at, at that moment, you supposed to be able to make a call like, yo, I need you on my album. But a lot of the niggas that you did mix, we talking about Yo Gotti back before Yo Gotti. We talking about mm -hmm. Titty Boy before 2 Chains. We talking. They all got on the record. But so when you was on M MMG. Well, Hillary Chantham is I mean, another that's one, one of them records. 2 Chains. That was the MMG uh, first yo record Gotti. I did. Well, the second record I did. Uh, shout out to Stuart. What year Rock. was that? 10, I think 10, 11, something like that. Oh. Somewhere. So they were shining when I first signed with MG, and that was the remix. Me, Stewie Rock, 2 Chains, Gucci, Gotti, Future, the homies. Because right. at the time I'm looking at Khaled, and I'm like, Khaled just use the same niggas over and over. You know why? Them is homies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So when I got the Hood Rich Anthem, it was supposed to be a radio intro, but it, niggas went so crazy and went so crazy on it, then it's like, to this day, you don't have a record with 2 Chains, Future, Gucci Man, Waka Flocka, and Yo Gotti on it. It can't be done. It can't be replicated. You but know what I'm that's saying? what I—that's why I'm asking it because I feel like, like you said, mm -hmm. Khaled can get he get the same people because they there's homies. homies. But I'm looking at mm -hmm. Future Yo Gotti. I'm looking Future at them did, as he did three records for me. Respectfully, Future did recently. Change did oh well now I'm not. I have no interest in doing records. Well, all right, when I say recently, I mean like MMG. Yeah, that was during okay. MMG. Okay. Hood Rich Anthem was, if you look at it, it's Warner, Warner Brothers or Atlantic MMG. Okay. And it's 2 Chains, Future, Waka Flocka, Gucci Man, and they all did the video too. Right. They might not have did it together, but they did it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I can't, you know, for all of those, um, for all of those artists, you got to understand the space that you're in. Like a rap, a, a rap artist has, you assume, you assume a bigger risk. See what I'm saying? We were talking about risk. So these are people who put it 
all on the line to be artists. And I know a lot of their stories. So when they go get 50, 100, 250, half a bill, whatever, I'm happy. I'm smiling because I know the niggas deserve that shit. Because there was a time where, albeit I might have believed in them and shit, nobody believed them. Nobody fucking with them. You know what I'm saying? I was at the studio with Titty Boy sitting there watching the Lakers game and he was telling me what he was finna do and I just got out the road with Wayne and bro, I'm finna go hard. And, uh, uh, uh. and I didn't look at him like it was crazy. I was like, bro, you got some hard shit. You just gotta go hard. Right. That's pretty much what I told everybody. It wasn't no rocket science for nobody. You got some hard shit. You just gotta go hard. I can help you, but I can't do it for you. So all them niggas went hard. I'm proud of the businessman that 2 Chains has become outside of just music. It's the husband that he is, like, he's a good he's a, all around he's dude for solid. a lot of people don't. <laughs> I'm very proud of Future and the influence he's had, and he's getting his credit for the influence he has. Uh, definitely salute to Walker. He took performance to another level in the South. Not too many niggas still to this day can perform like him. Didn't he start doing EDM too? Yeah, well, all that yeah, shit. Yeah, that's you know like what I'm Niggas is, is really putting, like, putting on. That's what I, I, I want to ask you, yo, um, because you down here, Future, right? I feel like I never heard this until I got down here. I was I was talking um doing the verses I'm talking like Kanye West versus Drake and somebody was like man future bigger than all them niggas and I'm like what <laughs> it was 21 I think no it was a cute yeah I think 21 said that in the interview right a few people mm-hmm. might have a few people I, I know I was yeah. interviewing somebody and they said it and I thought yeah. it was crazy as fuck yeah uh-huh. do you the influence that future got down here do you think because everybody's it's talking about it's unmatched so you it's, think he's like no, a no, no, Drake no, no. listen what I'm saying. It's unmatched. Niggas say he could beat Jay Z in verses, bro. I don't get into the verses shit because it's kind of like that. What if you want a million dollars for doing some? I don't get into that shit because <laughs> until that happens, I'll, whatever. You know what I'm saying? What we do have to do is I'm never the type person to talk against or down on nobody else. But what we do have to do is give this man his flowers for what he's done since 2010. Hell yeah. So he's got hits. There's a very big influence with what Dirty Sprite did and to change the culture of the type of consumption that people did. You know what I'm saying? A lot more niggas grew dreadlocks. A lot of niggas start wearing the shit that he wore. You see what I'm saying? So you have to, I don't just look at your music or look at influence. Look at Tupac. Yeah. Niggas are still talking about Tupac. Yes, it's the music, but it's like because motherfuckers shave their head off and got tattoos all niggas, over he, themselves. He's getting nose rings and shit. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the influence. So like Biggie made it cool to be a fat nigga. Like, right. You know what I mean? Like, Jay-Z has his influence. He's made niggas put on throwbacks, take off throwbacks, put on suits, get married. Yeah. You see what I'm 100%. saying? So yeah, 100%. I look at the coach. I look at the cultural influence of this shit like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Khaled, I never want to do no records. That wasn't even in me. I'm like, I do mixtapes. This is cash. It's tax-free. This shit is off the radar. I'm going to figure out some other shit. Fuck all that. When I'm seeing this nigga on TV on yachts in Miami going through the water, I'm like, Balling on the yacht. Oh, I'm missing out. Like, we got to get to this. Like, this nigga is going crazy. Then they, yeah, he went platinum. A DJ went platinum. But that's like, what I'm saying, yo. You help, bro. You help fucking put these niggas on in the fact. Like, you help break these niggas. Don't like, work like that. It's a moment. It's transactional. Like. I don't think it should work. Like, you better call this nigga right I can't, now. I can't, I can't sit here right now. Let's say this shit do 5 million views, mm-hmm. right? And they say, oh, screen game on that one. That's the one when more, more, more people know, homie, now. You can call me anytime you I want, nigga. I understand that because you you're because that's the nigga that you are. You can call me anytime. That's the nigga that you are. But yeah. I'm going to tell you, in this industry, don't don't have expectations. Nah, facts. It's safer fact. that way. If I see Pluto, I saw him at his birthday party a couple years ago. It's love. We chop it up. Happy for him. Happy for you, too, King. That's enough for me. Mm. Now, if it's a nigga that just won't acknowledge me that I exist, that's a different thing. But I don't have that issue with nobody. Like, if niggas see me and we run into each other in the city, we shop the same places, they show love, da 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 And then a lot of that return now, I don't need you to do a record for me. Come do this interview. Come do the big facts. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So they show me Bank and Jade that love. Like, they, they salute us. You know what I'm saying? Like, we think about we on a episode 105. We've had a lot right. of people that we've looked out for Come and sit with us, show us love. That's enough now. Now I want to talk about the conversation and the facts behind what really happened because I would see like people from other areas having commentary about our Southern My music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, nah, that's not how it mm-hmm. happened. I even seen DJs try to take credit for some shit I did that ain't from here. Like, nah, bro, that's not how it happened. You couldn't have been the first nigga to play the record. 
because I'm down here. Mm. I'll never say I was the first nigga to play a record from up there. It's up there. Right. You see what I'm saying? So I think that the podcast thing as a whole is like telling the story and letting people know what the fuck it really is, bringing the facts to this shit. Whatever the case is, like we have conversations about everything. Let's bring the facts to it. And the facts is all of my brothers, and I'm proud of all them niggas because they getting money. That's a fact. And that's the biggest thing. I said this earlier. I feel like it's easier for you to say, like, I'm just happy for niggas because you, you're still relevant. Like, if it was the opposite way, you might be I wouldn't hurt, be. But... I wouldn't be relevant if I just walked around worried about niggas, niggas and mad. <laughs> yeah, thanks. You, that's the you know, energy that takes yeah. everything. I, I don't understand. Like, I was just saying we were having a debate on Big Facts. I said, I'm not going to lie. People will be mad at me, but I feel like the motherfuckers in the comments just trying to bring people down are miserable fucking people. Mm. They're like, oh, you're going too hard. No, they're miserable. Misery loves company. Mm. I want to bring you down to my energy level because I ain't where I need to be. Mm. But all I know how to do is show love. If it's some shit that I just ain't fucking with, I'm just going to scroll past it. I'm not going to comment and be like, yo, you this and you that. Da, da, da. That shit don't help nothing. Like All I do is try to find the positive shit. Because when you surround yourself with that positive energy, that positive aura, you kind of create this bubble mm. where it's like, can't nobody really say nothing to you to fuck. Fuck with you. Ten years ago, that's a different thing. It's gonna fuck up my whole week. I'm gonna be mad. I'm gonna curse you out. It's gonna be a whole thing. You know what I'm saying? But now, as a more grown man, it's like, bro, I'm blessed. I got a wife. I got a daughter. I got a... I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? And I want to help other people be blessed. That's what we're supposed to be on as black people. See what sure. I'm saying? But it takes a, it takes way more energy. You know what I'm saying? To sit there and tear somebody down than it does to just show love. That's a fact. How is the podcast treating you, bro? I know it's, I love it's, it. You know, coming from radio, radio is contained. So there's certain shit I can't say, there's certain shit I can't do, you know what I'm saying? But in the podcast, there's it's freedom. And then even when we uh connected with uh Shots to Charlemagne, the Black Effect, and then Revolt, um Major. Sheesh. That was a big thing for us. Like, you know what you're getting into, especially bank, right? Like, you know, you know what you're getting into. They're like, nah, that's what we want. Like, we want y'all to be yourself. That's more important than any Anything else, any deal, anything is like, can we be big facts? Can we be who we are? Can we talk to the streets? Can we talk to the have nots? Can we have these real conversations, even if they're touchy? Can we be big facts? And can bank smoke his weed? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's important. Like, I tell people that too. Like, if you get a call, you're a rapper, and they want to sign you, here's this record deal. And it's money that you probably never seen before, right? You can't slow down fast enough to think about what this contract really is. This shit is marriage. You're about to marry a record label, right? So if you know anything about marriage, that means you got a wife, right? So that means that your house is now Our in y'all house. Yeah. So she has say-so. Mm-hmm. She has say-so on this. She has say-so on the art you put up. She has say-so on shit. So this is the same marriage you're having with a record label. So they got say-so on your shit. Hey, bro, we really we, we think that record is like two Baltimore man. You make some like more like can you make something more like mainstream? Now your core fans ain't fucking with you because mm-hmm. you went out and did some nut ass record ass bullshit. You lost your core. You shot your shot. And hopefully you become big and become a pop artist, but you shot your shot. That didn't work. So now you gotta go back home and walk around, niggas looking at you funny in the mall, but you got this marriage. And it's not the type of marriage that you can just everybody knows divorce is also costly. So a record label not finna just let you go. We just spent the bag on you. You see what I'm saying? So that's another thing you got to think about, like opportunity and what that opportunity really means. Like, ah, right, yeah, it's a record deal and this and that. I'm gonna look right back at you. Yeah, but can you put my creative control in there? And then look them in the eye and then see what see what it really is. How bad do you want to do this contract with me? Past just the monetary value because you're gonna spend that. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's just that's just the, that's just something that for the young boys like. You gotta stand on something. If you if you standing on, I'm on some this shit and I'm on fuck my. If that's what you stand on, cool. But you need to stand on it, and that's what you need to be. If you standing on some positive shit, if you standing on some player shit, whatever it is, you gotta stand on what you represent. Right. And I think a lot of people is just doing this shit just to get some money real quick. And then you see the money come, the money can go as fast as it can. Man, it's crazy you said that because it bring it full circle. I was about to kind of say the opposite of your last sentence. Is like you said, a lot of people doing it for the money. As far as this podcast shit, it's like, nigga, I've been doing this shit for a little minute now. I ain't seen mm-hmm. no money yeah, yet. So yeah, it's like you really gotta stand on it and really you gotta love it though. You, you know what I'm saying? You gotta really you do gotta it because it. you want to do it. Yeah, you, know you gotta saying? love it. 
a lot of niggas get into this shit because they see somebody on that fucking Instagram. Like I hate, like I say this, I'm getting redundant at this point. I fucking hate this, like this Instagram ever, right? And I say it because like I'm I'm not an old nigga, but I look at Instagram being IG, IG being instant gratification, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like everybody look at they look for what they see on TV. It's like oh I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. Like bitch. I'm gonna skip my label, but that shit get frustrating. Cause like, nigga, you don't know the time. All the time on big facts <laughs> because Instagram is the final result. Facts, bro. You don't know the work, the work that put in, that's it's put the in behind car, it. The money, the bras, the final result. That's why I do like a few of the people that will put in, put some of the steps to get there. Yeah, like See you gotta put saying? this fucking like, work show in. Show the process. You gotta look. You gotta fall in love with the process, and nobody knows how how long the process is gonna be. Um, but you gotta fall in love with the process. Nah, you know hundred percent. And another thing I like is shit because it, it, it is a, a, a sense of independency, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I was gonna ask you, uh, when you you did a, a interview with um, Nutterwick, mm -hmm. and I think something that was really trendy, like I guess he was like he was robbing niggas, or whatever, and mm -hmm. y'all was laughing, mm -hmm. and a few people was like, it's a shame that they laughed and mm -hmm. they didn't see anything. Can you talk to me about that in that moment? I feel like a lot of times you you talking to people mm -hmm. and you really just having a conversation, you're not even thinking. Yeah, you know what that that. The, the reason I never gave that no energy is simply because if if we got a hundred plus episodes and you're gonna judge our whole platform off of thirty seconds, then th that's on you. Mm. It ain't nothing I can do about that. If you if you're if it if it was if, if if it's a true big facts viewer supporter fan or otherwise or whatever that's really tapped in and knows what we about, you know that we got a whole episode called "Get a Job," mm. and that whole episode is talking about. Yo, you can go get a job, bro. Like, I don't know why niggas think that you can't go get a job. And we we don't never condone no robbing or no shit like that. Now, because we're a real platform, we also know that with the complete street life and street element, there are people that have to do shit that they have to do to survive. Not gratifying it. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. Like, people have been robbers. People have been crack dealers. People have been this. People have been scammers. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just the reality of it. So... I invite someone to really tap into the podcast and what we stand for and not judge that 30 seconds. And then even with that 30 seconds, a lot of people, because academics posted it, a lot of people that went back and watched the full interview are like, nah, if you, if you watch the full interview, like, you see a homie in a particular light, he kicking it how he kicking it, and they really put him on some game and they put each other on some game if you watch the whole thing. Right. But that's that instant gratification shit you're talking about again where it's like, Let's take the shock value 15 to 30 seconds. Not mad at academics at all, you know what I'm saying? Because he showed us a lot of love and, you know what I'm saying, promoted our platform when he didn't have to. You see what I'm saying? But that's just the one that caught. Homie spoke on it. And, you know what I'm saying? Of course, if you watch it, that's what he's saying. That's what I used to do. You know what I'm saying? That's what I had to do. My mother was incarcerated. He spoke on it. And that's just that. The rest of the commentary, the Stephen A. Smith, that type of shit, that is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, people is going to have their comments and commentary on shit. I personally wouldn't get involved in commenting on some shit if I don't know enough about it. That's me personally, but to each his own. Like, kind of like with this, I don't even want to say the name, the Fresh and Shit podcast. With the woman in, uh, yeah. with Asian Doll. I don't, I don't even say the name because, like, honestly, I feel like with this, just being honest and keep it all the way 100, like, mm -hmm. we've been in this time that we understand that, like, it is what it is. All publicity is good publicity when it kind of out out work, right? They, I, I think even, I heard some shit about them getting a lot of fucking followers. Yeah, that's why I said I don't even say that name because like I see the shade room posting them, I see Joe Button posting them, and I see yeah they call themselves like putting them on the spot or they call themselves trying to check them, but all you doing is bringing more light to it because the person that don't know is gonna be like, what the fuck? Who is this? Like you know what I'm saying? So it's like I don't even say the name, but I say that to say like it's like that. But the more you post it, if you don't like it or not, the more you gonna feed it. It's like we we, we glorify uh, active shooters. We glorify uh, cops that kill black people by putting everything. And they be having GoFundMe for millions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? That's just the fucked up part of the society. But people don't think before they act. Mm. So it's emotion. You see what I'm saying? And that's the biggest thing that every man has to master that emotion because it's like, take a few seconds before you react. Because when you just react, I feel like I should say this. And then, cool, that's your... God given right, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not finna talk about no nigga. It ain't finna happen unless it's in a positive respect. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't know what the man going through. It ain't my business, you know what I'm saying? I'm not here to judge that man. That's just who I am. That particular moment, I saw it, I scroll past it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think that we should uh, respect our black women. We have to respect our black 100%. women, right? So it looks the way that it looks. 
But at the end of the day, I didn't even watch the whole thing, so I don't know what led up to it. No, that's crazy. Know, but you know what I mean? Like I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's the when you sign up for this shit, you signed up for it too. It is what it it's is. It's crazy because it's more than that. But again, like I ain't say the name, but it's crazy because these are, this is things that they speak about, like just not fucking with dark skinned women and shit like that. So we that's had that moment crazy. with Big Facts with Suki Hana talking about colorism. It just went viral. You know what I mean? And she was talking about colorism and how she felt about it. And everybody jumped up and said, nah, she shouldn't have said that. And then, How are we going to tell somebody what they should have said? She's having a real moment talking about some shit that I feel like is a real topic where it's kind of like, you know, sometimes there might be, even though there's a racism, there might be colorism, like a light-skinned woman versus a dark-skinned, this and that. I'm sure there's situations. I'm not yeah. saying that that's an excuse or every situation, but these are the things I feel like one of the most masterful moments last year, man, I mean, I speak openly on this. It is not because of the opinion of whatever is believed. One of the most masterful media moments last year was Dave Chappelle's mm. stand-up, mm. right? And what he's saying is, imagine you in a house, right? And it's a problem. Somebody breath stinks, right? And you are talking about your breath stinks. Stink. Please tell me my breath stinks. No, so I can not brush sure. my teeth. I'm no, just, I'm saying, just saying, if, if, that, if we in a house, but if we me. never tell the nigga his breath stinks, it's always gonna we're stink. never gonna cure the fucking problem. Facts. So we have to get to the gritty of talking about uncomfortable shit. Yeah. So what Dave Chappelle is saying is like, yo, let's talk about this uncomfortable shit. Whatever my opinion is, let's talk about this shit. Because obviously, there's a lot of people that feel a lot of way about it. Now, granted, they tried to cancel him and do this and all this other shit. But guess what happened? Motherfuckers start talking about this shit. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So nah, yeah. but these niggas is wild. They're saying that they don't fuck with the dark side. Like basically saying they don't fuck with. They don't like dating black women. Yeah, That's their I opinion. Ain't, I ain't, like, but again, it's just niggas that, is wild. I mean, me personally. I'm so just, you got to at that point. At that point, with any platform, right? Whenever you see whatever you see in the content that comes from a platform, it's this simple, right? You can choose whether you want to continue to watch or subscribe support, to uh-huh. or support that platform or not. But speaking against it openly actually giving gives it more because guess what? There's some other people, people out there that feel like that. And then so it's you some, just promoted them. But it's people out there that don't even know what the fuck is going on now that you speak on it, they're gonna be nosy and be like, I wanna know, and they're gonna go to it. You know what I'm saying? It mm-hmm. just it is it, is what it is. But bro, um, that's all I got, dog. I, I thank you for uh, even asking a DM. Mm-hmm. It meant a lot to me. That was uh, all good. Happy twenty twenty two, man. You keep hustling, you do your thing, whatever it is you desire, manifest that shit. Don't never tell no, nobody tell you otherwise. And um media is a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, you know right, what I'm saying? 100%. Just keep doing your shit. That's all I can tell you. Appreciate it, man. Yep. Um conversation series, Mr. J Hill, DJ Scream. Bigfactspod.com, triple w dot bigfactspod.com. Bank J, the whole team, salute, hood rich, salute. Let's go. Gang, gang, it's a wrap. It's a, we only got nothing else to say. That's it.